Hi guys, welcome to season four of Andaz. For those of you who don't know us, let me tell you a little bit about Andaz. Andaz is an inspirational talk show here from the USA, and we scour the entire country, bringing you fascinating, inspirational stories of real people. We talk to innovators that have actually changed the world one billion people at a time. We learn about the inspiration behind fashion designers. We talk about building your confidence and expanding your mind into areas that you could have never imagined. And guess what? We even travel to space this season. So let's not waste any more time and let's get started on this journey of Andaz. Every week we have a new topic and great new fabulous guests. This week we start off the season with a new you. Imagine being a small little boy in India with a handicap. Fast forward years later, this little boy is all grown up and he's on the cover of People magazine as one of the hottest chefs in India. Today he cooks for Obama and is known all across the world as celebrity master chef Vikas Khanna. How did he do it? Well, let's find out. Hi Vikas, welcome to Andaz. Hi Sarika, pleasure to be here. Well, you know, I'm just excited to talk to you because your story is so interesting. In fact, this interview came about that way. You started telling me bits and pieces of your life and I said, that's it. We have to interview you on our show. I think our viewers will love to hear your story. You were born with a handicap. Yes. How did that teach you resilience? You know, uh, for other kids who could openly play and be kids, it was easy for them. And for me, you know, I felt that um, even that was a struggle. That was a moment of shame sometimes. And it figures out that, you know, either I can take all that energy over me and drown myself in negativity, or what my grandmother used to say and her mother used to say, that he will not run, he's only going to fly. But I felt that, you know, it's the resilience that teaches you. Nothing is a better lesson in life than time. Yeah. Time understands how to hurt you, how to heal you, everything how to make you full. But there had to be that moment in your life where you said, that's it, I'm going to overcome this and I'm going to succeed. Yeah, I didn't feel it, my mother felt it. Your mother felt it. She's saying, you know, you have become like a mental block that you have to wear these shoes all the time. You are always worried about this. So she takes me to company bag in Amritsar. There's a big statue of Gandhiji. And um, she told me, run. I was almost 13, you know. The fear is bigger than actual circumstances. Absolutely. In everything in life. In everything in life, you know. So I take it as symbolism that I ran. I ran around the man who gave our nation the freedom to the woman who gave me the freedom. You came here from Amritsar 11 years ago. What did you have in mind? So I come here, no friends, no support, no families, nothing. But I think it was great because it teaches you the resilience this country is built on. I had only $3 in my pocket. So I'm wondering, you know what, what the hell I'm going to eat? And it's freezing. And when you come to America as an immigrant, cold. it's very cold. <laughs> You've never heard of thermals. You don't know how to dress up. And you're very casual. And, um, and I see a New York rescue mission, which is a homeless shelter. So I was there and I stood in the line and a woman comes and puts a blanket on me and says, Merry Christmas. And that is exactly what I needed. They, it was a celebration of Christmas and I had the most wonderful salmon. So I asked them they had availability in a of bed. So I slept there, so I'm like, bingo. I yeah. have the $3 intact, I've eaten, and I can go walk back to work. See how the universe works to help you when, you have, when you're on a mission and you have a goal? If I was not positive that time, mm -hmm. I would have not seen that sign of people. If that day, on 24 December, I had went to the airport, I could have figured out a way to fly back. Yeah. And that was it, you know. You had a return ticket when you came. And I said, no, there is a space for me here. I'm going to make place for myself. I know this work here, the holy kitchens that you got. Yes. So what did you learn out of all of this? I was like, asked exactly the same question. Same question I was asked by a professor at Harvard University, yeah. who asked me that, you've experienced this, you know. You figured out that you can understand people through food. Mm -hmm. like, you know, people thought that through scriptures, through mythologies. Here you come up with a brand new idea of called holy kitchens. Yeah. This yeah. common denominator of sharing food in every faith exists. 
I learned one thing that on the core of humanity, we all remain kids. We all, that's brilliant. We, Across all religions. All faiths. There's a, there's a human tendency that we still have this uh, our controlled fear from our collective subconscious that in the cave, our only fear was food. We had families. So when we could get food and we all shared, it removed all the other fears. Ultimate food has to be about comfort. I say in the kitchen that you can people will forget the garnish, but they'll never forget what the food made them feel. It, make, it can make you travel. Wow, thank you, Vikas. It was such a delight talking to you in New York, and you really taught us all how to just let go of our fear and keep going. The mind has so much power. Well, later on, we're going to actually get a recipe from Vikas Khanna, so you want to stay tuned and you don't want to miss that. Well, we have a real treat for you here on Invaz. Every week, we have innovator Naveen Jain, who just has the most fabulous rags to riches story. He came all the way from India to the US and has definitely lived the American dream. And what's wonderful is that he's going to share his knowledge and inspiration with all of us here on Andaz every week. So let's get his first inspirational tip of the week. Happy prosperous new year. And you wonder, what is prosperity and what is success? Success is not about how much money you have in the bank. Success is about how many lives can you improve. And I have found a one sure way of knowing people who are really successful is humility. The day you become humble is the day you are successful. Because if you have iota of arrogance left in you, that means you're still trying to prove something to yourself or somebody else. So be out there, be successful, and be humble. Andar. Brought to you by Basic Ayurveda, your source for Ayurvedic juices. Yatek Institute, the art of medicine, the science of weight loss. Andhav, brought to you by Silk Threads, the name says it all. Weight loss. Weight loss is one of those things that all of us struggle with. I mean, anxiety eating, stress eating, eating junk food, but did you know that if you balance the hormones in your brain, such as dopamine and serotonin, this can actually help you lose weight and live a happier life? And losing weight makes you feel great, you feel positive and ready to take on the world. Well, we're going to talk to Jay Piatek, the founder of the Piatek Institute in Indianapolis, about weight loss, myth busters, and feeling great. Let's go check it out. Hi, Jay. Welcome to Andaz. Hi, Sarka. It's great to, to have you here. Oh, of course. You know, you are a celebrity in this town. We just drove up and there's a big Jay Piatek <laughs> Institute sign. And I love your office and the aquarium and how you've done it all up. Thanks, Sarka. When I started out, I wanted it to look different than other weight loss practices. So many patients that are overweight, it's almost like back alley treatment when you right. look at diet doctors. And so my wife and I started this practice 17 years ago. And just through word of mouth, it has grown, and we've seen now over 17,000 patients. This is the time of the year where we all indulge and start eating, and I think this was the perfect episode to launch weight loss. Let's say we're going to a party tonight, mm -hmm. and you know you're going, what do you eat earlier in the day? Conventional wisdom is that they tell people to eat more earlier, so then they're not as hungry later. But what I tend to see is when you eat salads early and certain foods, it doesn't impact you at all at night. And so all you're doing is adding another 1,000 calories to your already big load you're gonna have later that night. Right. But you eat more protein earlier, and then when you get to your dinner, then you're, you can cheat a little bit more. So what's a perfect breakfast, lunch, and dinner? The, the perfect to me when I see my patients is you can eat anytime you're hungry, you go eat. Mm -hmm. Then it's not painful, you're not going hungry. You eat, but you make it filling foods. Right. There's foods that cheat you in your tr when you're trying to lose weight. Now they're healthy to people that are lean. And so they're typically there's six foods that throw it off. One is salads, then fruit, nuts, peanut butter, liquid calories, and then cereal. Salads are even worse. If I wanted to gain 10 pounds this month, I just go to a restaurant and order a big Cobb salad, and that would give me a thousand calories, which is eight to 10 pounds a month of gain. You know, who knows what was in that salad, but when they start throwing in the croutons, the bacon bits, the eggs, the salad right. dressing, all bets it, are off. In your treatment, 
you found that balancing hormones and bringing your hormones back to when you were in your 20s or at an earlier age actually repairs your body and prevents weight gain or it can help you stop cravings of sweets and other exactly. types of foods, right? And you're taking a pill. I know a lot of people out there will think that taking a pill, oh no, that's bad for me, a weight loss pill, there's a taboo against that, a negative so, stamp. What are your thoughts on that? What I tend to do is use the meds as a tool, just like when I give Prozac to a patient with depression, I don't just give a pill and say, see you in another year, hope you make it. Right. I give them the medicine, teach them techniques to deal with stress or whatever's depressing them, and then when they don't need it anymore, you wean off of it. The program that I created actually is a multifaceted approach based on four facets. Mm -hmm. One is diet. I think you have to diet. Everyone's got to eat below their metabolic rate. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have cravings, it is so much easier to last. And yet you still can eat a piece of fudge, but you won't eat five. Right. The second is the exercise. Well, you can move and it doesn't hurt you. And then we have the medicines and we give them at the right time and we make it so you can have a fighting chance to last for six months. And then the last thing is motivation. We try to bust through all the problems that people can have so that way they have a 90% a, a chance of hitting their goal and keeping it off. I love your passion for um, what you're doing and how it actually changes lives. Give us a story that really touched you and kept you moving. Right. Because I'm sure it's stressful, it's like any business, every day, seeing patients day in, day out. Something exactly. keeps you going. You know, it, it was unconventional. Like I said, I was an emergency room doctor. I saw the problems there were. I had a mother come up to me and she started crying. Mm -hmm. And she says, I will sign a release and I please treat my son. If it was my son, someone she's in my family, I would do yeah. it. And so then I studied it more of the medicine. I figured out how to pair out down the dose. I gave it to her son, gave him uh, the diet uh, information, exercise, and then he started losing. Okay. And the cool thing is, as time went by, eventually he changed. He was real quiet when I first saw him. No yeah. confidence. By the yeah, end, he's coming in the room by himself, talking to me, looking great. You know, belly's gone, which bo didn't bother him anymore. On the last visit, the mother said, I gave my son birth and you gave him life. And so, it, you know, it, I, I'm just glad I got to participate in his care because it was all him. He did it, you know, because when people do well, it's not because of me. It's not because of medicines. It's because they t did something right and they kept doing it and they never gave up. And so it doesn't matter. You can have the best pill in the world. And if you quit, it's not going to do any good. And so you've got to be able to go the distance to get to the goal. Well, thanks, Jay. And guess what? We get to see Jay here every week, and he's going to give us a new weight loss tip of the week. But you know, alternative medicine is becoming quite popular these days. Ayurveda, which is an ancient tradition in India, is now going mainstream, and people are seeing the benefits across the world. Well, Charmeen Khan, Ayurvedic expert from the Chopra Center, is going to give us a tip today that'll help relax your mind, body, and soul. Let's go delve into the world of Ayurveda. Thank you, Sarika. As we know, proper digestion is essential to good health. And it's not just the food that goes in through our mouth that's important, but also the conscious steps involving in eating. Some of the guidelines for a proper digestive fire would be to eat when you feel at a capacity of about two or three. Like considering on the appetite gauge, one would be feeling famished, 10 would be feeling full. So eating when you feel about two to three and also stopping when you feel at you're about six or seven. Noticing the texture, the look, the feel, the colors of the food that you're eating and noticing how the food tastes. I'm Charmeen, your Ayurvedic expert, and I'll see you next week. Andaz, brought to you by Basic Ayurveda, your source for Ayurvedic juices. Yatek Institute, the art of medicine, the science of weight loss. Well, thanks, Charmeen. I just sure love the way you ate that orange. You made it look so good. That was just the best orange ever. We all have to remember to eat mindfully to enjoy our food. And next, we head back into the kitchen with Vikas Khanna, where he shows us how to make the best salmon. And let's get some food for the soul. Hi, 
So here we are in this amazing kitchen. And ladies, before we get started, I just wanted to say that People Magazine named Vikas the hottest chef in the world. Can you believe that? I no. mean, I think he's the hottest chef that I've ever seen. Tell me, what are we making today? Okay, I'm glad we're talking about the food now. <laughs> For this dish, if I was in India, I would use coconut oil. Okay. It also has a high smoking point. For here, we're using a vegetable oil. To this, what we're going to do, I'm going to give you this four major ingredients which actually season this dish. Okay. Mustard seeds. So I just drop it in? Yes. It's almost one inch ginger. Approximately six to eight curry leaves. Curry leaves are extremely flavorful. One serrano chili, seeded and finely chopped. One medium onion, which has been finely chopped. Now you okay. can give it a stir. Yeah. To this, we are going to add one cup of coconut milk. In India, generally, we would you use... use coconut milk? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, my mom makes the best Indian food. I never enter the kitchen. <laughs> yes. This is why you need to teach me. This is why I'm here. They, they use a lot of coconut milk. Okay. I'm, I'm so sorry. But <laughs> you're so right because till the age of 17, you know, I, I grew up in Punjab. Okay. I never tasted coconut milk in my life. Yeah. But you know, you're talking about the world which was pre-Google, you know. Right, right. So you had no information except for traveling. One cup of unsweetened. Oh, it's kind of thick too. Yes. What is that, salt? Shut <laughs> salt. <laughs> you can't be fun I picked it up from a temple. I wow, love this, this is a very extravagant way to hold your salt. To hold to a salt. Oh, okay, okay, I'm so, spilling. So no do problem. I just grab a little and, yes. and just sprinkle it? And yeah, to this, you're going, I'm going to add one surprise ingredient. Pomegranate molasses. Yes, it's that it's thick. That thick. When you're going to taste this dish, this is from where all the flavors are going to come from. Oh, okay. It's going to dominate this whole dish. Got it. So, is there any um, recipe or specific tradition that your grandma or your family used to use that you still use with you till this day? Yes. It's um, every time my grandmother cooked in the kitchen, she would always breathe very well. She said, "It's the breath which connects you to God and to wow. food." Half cup of water will go in this to bring all the flavors together. Wow. You have this thick bottom pan. Okay. Approximately two tablespoons of oil. And what we're going to do is, we have a beautiful piece of bass. This is approximately five ounces. Okay. This is the safest way when you have this. At this point, I'm going to add the small containers to make this a homemade butter. Oh, wow. It's very, very high fat. A <laughs> tablespoon of butter will go in here right now. Okay. I'm adding a little saffron to it to infuse the oil with the saffron. It's used a lot in Kashmiri cuisine because it grows in Kashmir. Okay. So this is going to be interesting since I, I don't eat seafood, but I'm doing it just for you. It's an honor. <laughs> oh my god. This is amazing. This is so delicious. The fish is so tender and the flavors just pop out at you. And it doesn't even feel like I'm eating something fishy. Something fishy. I think I'm going to start eating seafood, you guys. No, seriously. Food is not everything. Relationships are. I think that's a great learning experience from a culture where you come from. Right. And the culture we live in. And eventually, it's food is something which is like the spices. It has to enhance everything around it. Yeah. Relationships, flavors, everything. And if it brings people together, then it means it's, more. It has the power then. Well, thank you so much. This was My so pleasure. much fun cooking with you, and I think that now I'm going to start eating seafood. Thanks to you. <laughs> All right, thanks, Isha and Vikas. Boy, he sure is handsome. We speak to another fabulous entrepreneur in New York City, Sorbi. She actually took Indian spices and infused them with Western desserts, and mmm, this is sure going to delight your taste buds and a nice recipe to comfort the soul at home. Let's go check it out. Crazy. Hi, Servi. Hey, Thanks for yeah. letting us come to your kitchen course, and cook course, with you. So I actually read a really funny story about you, about how when, you know, it was Christmas time, it was the holiday season, you were more excited to taste all the desserts and open the presents. Is that true? That's very <laughs> true. I have done savory cooking for a very long time. 
uh, as much as I've done research. Right. So I wanted to do something that was easy, easy enough to do for, for people. Right. Because most people find it, they say, oh, desserts are so challenging. Yeah, because you feel like you're going to be sitting there for five hours baking this cake, decorating the cake, Correct. and all that stuff. So. Correct. So here, here I have some figs. Ooh. Those are dried figs. Okay. Um, and I'm just going to throw them in the pot. There's no measurement. That's red wine that's oh, kind wow. of corked and it's kind of Should we taste rats a bit before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For people that don't drink wine, because there's yeah. this huge amount in our community right. that don't drink wine, right. you could just use orange juice. I'm doing a little bit of sugar, not a lot, just a little bit. And then I have some whole spices here. I have some star anise that I'm going to throw in here. Oh, wow. so I have some green cardamom. Okay. I have a few black peppercorns. And so this is kind of you're incorporating like Indian flavors Correct. with, you Correct. know, a Western exactly. dessert. Exactly. I like that. That's nice. And then I have, I'll add a pinch of salt. That's some chili powder. Chili powder. So we're, we, we have it on like a high flame right now. As soon as it comes to a boil, I'm just basically going to simmer it. This we're going to use uh, for a filling. We're going to make like pistachio green cardamom. Oh, okay. Truffles. A nice. little bit Indian, but still Western. Western. Yeah, I idea. love that. We're just going to melt this and then we're going to dip it Okay. and then we're going to roll it in the nuts that we have. Perfect. Yes. Let's, let's get this done. And I'm going to take all of this crushed pistachio and put it right here. So you're just basically dipping it in and making sure every part of it has the chocolate and on it. And then you're going you're gonna to use your I'll do fingers to just coat the... This so is the we, final step? This is the final step. So we're going to taste. I can't wait. Okay, good. It's going to taste. <laughs> I've been waiting um, for this this whole time. So here's our uh, poached fix that okay. we prepared. And then, yeah. So that's vanilla ice cream that you're just putting in there? Mm -hmm. Oh my god. That looks All so right, good. so try. I'm going to enjoy okay, it. Okay, let's cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. It just melts mm -hmm. right in your mouth. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to eat the rest of this, so I'll see you guys later. Boy, that recipe sure looked good. I'm gonna have to try that at home. Isha and Serbi just had a fabulous time in that kitchen. It's kind of cute watching Isha learn how to cook, isn't it? We end the show today by telling you about a competition that we are having. For those of you that want a chance to be on TV, well, this may be your opportunity. We're having a competition here at Andaz. Check out our Facebook page, and in March, come join us, and this may be your chance to get featured on international TV. Like us on Facebook for more fun prizes and tell us, what's your andaz? Next, we had a competition where we had YouTube stars from all over the country submit their video and show us their talent. Well, a young girl in Arizona, Lisa Tolvar, won with her Bollywood dance, and she won a trip to the Caribbean Islands by Lost and Travels. Let's check out her YouTube video. And we'll see you next week on Andaz with more inspiration, great guests, and fun. The Andaz Superstar Contest is brought to you by Lawson Travel. Experience the world with us. It's all about happening. Events. List yours on miraboxoffice.com. Hi, my name is Lisa Bovar. I'm 16 years old and I'm from Tucson, Arizona, USA. Brought to you by India One, On Demand Marketing, Unirello, Global Excellence, delivered to your doorstep. Unable to walk and destined for a life of failure.